My book, Logistic Clusters, came out at the end of last year. I wrote it because I was involved in the development of the Zaragoza logistic cluster called Plaza, which is the largest logistics park in Europe. The basic theory of logistic cluster is not different than any other clusters. What happens is, in any cluster, some of the benefits are that there is tacit information exchange between companies, there is a specialized labor that moved in, specialized suppliers move in, so the cluster, all the companies in the cluster become more efficient. Michael Porter at Harvard actually wrote or found some evidence that it's easy to start new companies in such clusters and there's a, the knowledge exchange makes the cluster more competitive in general. All these factors exist in logistic clusters. However, there are some much stronger factors that make it grow. Uh, logistic clusters are also big transportation hubs. And as more companies move into the cluster, transportation companies can use larger conveyances, being it larger airplanes, larger trains, larger trucks, which are less costly. Also, the utilization of these conveyances is higher. So costs go down. At the same time, as more companies join the cluster, the level of service offered by the transportation carrier goes up. It becomes better because there's more service to further locations, there's higher frequency of service, so transportation cost goes down, transportation level of service goes up, more companies move into the cluster. So the cluster keeps growing. That's the thing that by and large governments are fascinated about clusters. They think that you just start it and then there's a mechanism that makes it grow on its own. It's true about all clusters, even stronger about logistic clusters. One of the most fascinating findings that I had in my research is the impact not only on economic growth in the region, which is substantial, but on what might call social justice. These logistic clusters are a huge job creation engine. And most importantly, unlike IT clusters or Wall Street clusters, it's not for highly educated engineers. It's for people at the bottom of the ladder. Another, in, another element of logistic clusters is that the jobs are not only logistic jobs. Because what happens, the freight is moving there. The items are coming from China, from Mexico, from the other part of the country, no matter what. They are there before they get into a retail store. If they are there, there are a lot of activities that can be done on them. So in all these logistic clusters, you have people handling repair, maintenance, tagging, um, putting packages around stuff, packaging in certain ways for uh, a retail display. And you have people and jobs that you wouldn't expect in logistic cluster. UPS has more than a dozen pharmacists working in its cluster because it distributed medicine, medical supplies. Zappos has over 50 high-level videographers working in their distribution center, which is in the Louisville cluster, because they need every shoe that comes into the distribution center to have a very nice video. The third category of job creation is actually a truck manufacturing, because manufacturing also needs the ability to move raw material and supplies into the manufacturing plant and distribute the finished product. Having great transportation services helps manufacturing as well. So there are a lot of places that started as logistic clusters and now became manufacturing subclusters. Indianapolis, for example, started as a logistic cluster and now has healthcare manufacturing cluster. So there are lots of activities that in our that take place around logistic clusters.